Good morning everyone. My name is Bhavya Cha and I'm a student of 11C. Today I thought of making a presentation on the poem a photograph. So let us begin this. So it is kind of very important thing that when we start a poem we must know who has written that poem. It means about the poet the poem a photograph is written by shirley tolson kathleen shirley tolson was an english writer poet journalist and a local politician her birth date was 20th of may 1924 and she was born in united kingdom she died on 23rd september 2018 This was her picture and she was the lady who wrote the poem a photograph Let me just give you an overview of this poem This poem is very touchy the poem shows a drastic change the poem is written by her in such a way which will make somebody remember of someone who was very close to your heart it means that it is very painful for losing someone in your life who was very close to your heart especially your parents your relatives your friends how very close to your heart it's a pain which is unbearable but this is the harsh truth of life and we have to accept that over here shirley tolson who is the poet of this poem has depicted everything in a short summary that her mother is no more on the earth and she is missing her laughter she is missing her presence so let us deal with this poem and let us understand what are the different things that she is saying in the poem and definitely we will learn something from this poem and that something is kind of very important thing that we have to understand that every one of us will die someday every one of us be it your parents be it your friends be it your relatives be it any loved ones everybody who comes on this earth will go one day so let us so let us understand this poem without any further ado so i have taken the poem from our ncert textbook so that it's very relatable and it's easily accessible for all of us now before starting that we must know the central idea or the theme and the tone of the poem which is already written over here and these were the things which ma'am made us write so the central idea or the theme was that a strong bond of love shared by a mother and a daughter is shown in this poem the medium of expressing it is melancholy as the poet is laments the loss of a mother so the main idea the main theme behind every other thing that is written over here is that the poet has wanted to express a feeling that she, her mother is no more and she is actually missing her and a strong bond a strong connection between the parent and the child the mother and the daughter is shown in this poem now second thing was the tone of the poem the tone of the poem drastically changes from joyful and cheerful to the tone of sadness and melancholy 
Now, when we will deal with the stanzas of the poem, then we'll be able to understand that why I have written the tone of the poem drastically changes. Because in the first and the second stanzas, we'll see that the tone of the poem was joyful, cheerful, full of happiness. But as soon as we move at the end of the second stanzas and last stanza, the third stanza, we'll come to know that the tone has changed and it has turned to be sad and melancholy. So, let us read it. The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling, each one holding one of my mother's hands, and she the big girl, some twelve years or so. Okay. So, over here, the poet is saying that the cardboard, or over here, it's an indirect reference to the photograph. The photograph shows her that how the two girl cousins were paddling. Paddling means walking in shallow water. Each one holding one of my mother's hands. So suppose these were the two cousins and they were paddling and both of them were holding the 12 year old young girl and they were paddling in the shallow water. They were holding the hand of the poetess mother. Okay. And she, the big girl, some 12 years or so. So, her mother was 12 years at that time. When she was seeing the photograph, the time was that. All three stood still to smile through their hair. At the uncle with the camera, a sweet face. My mother's that was before I was born. So all the three were smiling through their hair and they were looking at the camera so that the uncle could take a snapshot, could, could take a picture and can capture those sweet memories that they were having over there. A sweet face, my mother's that was before I was born. So in the very first lines, we could say that the poet was observing the photographs that she got and she said about the time or the age of her mother at the time and also she described her face and that was a sweet face my mother's that was before I was born of course when, uh, when her mother was 12 years old uh, she was not born and she was seeing her so cheerful so young so beautiful a sweet face and the sea, which appears to have changed less, washed their terribly transient feet. These two lines are the most significant lines of the first stanza because it tells something very deep. And the sea, which appears to have changed less. This over here, the sea symbolizes eternity and immortality means that the sea has not changed. It is just as same as it was earlier. It is very same, but it washed their terribly transient feet. Over here, transient means temporary. It washed their terribly transient feet. It means that they were, the, they were standing over here and the footmarks were made, but the sea, which appears to have no change, was washing those temporary feet marks. Were washing those feet marks, and over here also a comparison the feet is referring to the human beings over here. So the temporary human beings are being washed with those seas which are eternity and immortality signs referred here. Okay, we'll be discussing the poetic devices in the next slide and I'll be telling that there are different types of poetic devices in this poem and these are very interesting things. Okay, some 20-30 years later, she had laughed at the snapshot. See Betty and Dolly, she had said. 
and look how they dressed us for the beach. The sea holiday was a past. Mine is her laughter. Both wry with the laboured ease of loss. Okay. So, in the very first stanza, we saw that she said about her mother's age. She was seeing the photograph and observing them. Then we saw that her mother was having a sweet, beautiful face. Okay. And then we talked about the sea and the eternity and the immortality and how the sea washed the terribly transient feet of people. Right. Now, in the second stanza, the mother is now about 20, 30 years later when she used to look at the photograph. She used to say that see Betty and Dolly. It means the two girl cousins which were who were with the with the poetess mother. Okay. So her their name were Betty and Dolly. And she used to say that look how they dressed us for the beach. The sea holiday was her past, mine is her laughter. So with this line we can say that the mother is no more. It means that the poetess mother is no more because the sea holiday was her past. Over here, the poetess is trying to say that the sea holiday was her mother's past, but mine is her laughter. So she is missing the laugh of her mother when she used to see the snapshot. She used to laugh seeing her photograph so cheerful and so memorable events that she used to have in her past life when she was young 12 year old girl okay so this depicts that her mother is no more both rye with the labored ease of loss both are disappointed rye means disappointed with the labored ease of loss over here labored ease uh, represents a poetic device oxymoron uh, labored over here means something which can be accessed with a great effort and then again ease which can be accessed easily and something which is done easily. Okay, so labored and ease are used together. We'll be discussing this very soon. So I will explain this line that is both rye with the labored ease of loss. So both of them, it means the mother who is disappointed uh, uh, with the sea holiday uh, because uh, it was her past and she was not living at that moment, of course. And then the poetess who is missing her mother's laughter. Okay. Now, she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. It means it has been 12 years from now when she died. And of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It means... This circumstance, uh, it means the death of her mother has made her leave to say nothing because it's silence silences. The silence, the darkness of the death silences every person. Such is the harsh truth of life that she lost her mother and she wrote a poem and she is expressing her feeling that the silence, the darkness of the death of someone who is very close to your heart, someone who was your loved one, is no longer on this planet. And its silence silences. Sense of loss is quite painful to bear. And the silence just silences everything and everyone. This is what has been said over here. Okay. Now, let us discuss the poetic devices used in the poem. So, poetic devices. Now, of course, there are different poetic devices that Ma'am made us discussed in the very first two sessions of our class. But what are poetic devices? Poetic devices are just basically to use to make the poem look beautiful and to create a flow or say rhythm in the poem. That is the thing. To make something look beautiful, to make something look in a rhythm is what is considered to be the poetic device. So, there are different poetic devices that are used in the poem. That is alliteration, transferred epithet, enjambment, personification, oxymoron, paradox or irony, repetition, 
cynic docket, allusion. So these are the different poetic devices which are used in the poem. Now I'll tell you that where these poetic devices are used. So, okay, let me use a highlighter so that I can, okay, I can highlight it. The cardboard shows me how it was. The cardboard shows me. The cardboard shows me is something of personification because the cardboard is a non-living thing but the cardboard shows me a non-living thing can't show anything okay so over here it's personification because it's personifying okay okay the cardboard shows me is an example of personification the cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling now from the walls to the paddling there is no punctuation mark therefore it's an example of what it's an example of enjambment. Okay, so till the was to the paddling, it's an example of enjambment. Okay, moving on, next line. Each one holding one of my mother's hand. Now, we are very clear about the alliteration when the first letter of the, cons of the consonant sound repeats, it's an alliteration. So, my mother's is an example of alliteration. Each one holding one of my mother's hands. Okay. And she the big girl some 12 years or so. All three stood still to smile through their hair. Over here again stood still to smile is an example of alliteration. S, S, S is repeated. Over here M and M was repeating. Through their hair at the uncle with the camera a sweet face. Again, there is no punctuation mark from the hair to the camera. So, it's an example of enjambment. Then, again, uh, we have a sweet face, my mother's. My mother's, again, is an example of alliteration and an M and M is again repeating. That was before I was born. And the C, which appears to have changed less, Wash their terribly transient feet. Their terribly transient feet. So over here, the terribly transient feet. T, T, T. Alliteration again. Okay. And transient feet is an example of transferred epithet. Okay. Because transient is such an adjective which is used to describe a person or thing. And I said earlier that feet is actually describing the human beings. So transient feet, the temporary feet as I said earlier, okay? So it's an example, the transient feet is an example of transferred epithet. Moving on, some 20, 30 years later, again this 20, 30 is an example of alliteration. Years later, she had laughed at the snapshot. See Betty and Dolly. She had say. Again, we have uh, she had a laugh at the snapshot. See, S, S, S again is repeated and it's an example of alliteration. Again, we have she had say again as an example of alliteration. Alliteration is a poetic device which is very common in all the poems that you will see. It's very, very common thing and it's very easily identifiable with, with every poem and it's very easy also. See Betty and look how they dressed us for the beach. The sea holiday was her past. Mine is a laughter. Both rye with the labored ease of loss or loss. So over here, you can see there is no punctuation mark. So in the second stanza, the second stanza is full of enjambment because there is no punctuation mark and there is a continuation of the line without any punctuation mark between uh, later to the snapshot, Betty to the dolly and then again with they to the beach, holiday to the laughter and both ride to the loss. Okay. Now we have with the labored ease of loss. 
Labored ease, as I discussed earlier, it is an example of oxymoron because when two opposite words are used together, it's called as oxymoron because labored and ease is something that you can also identify. It's an oxymoron. These are two different and opposite words. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Now she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. And of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It's silence, silences. It's an example of alliteration and also an example of what? It's an example of paradox or irony. And also this silence, silences is an, ex is an example of repetition. Now many years till lived and circumstance to there is nothing to say at all is an example of enjambment. Okay. So we have talked about different types of poetic devices that are used in this poem. And I think each and every line was understandable and it was uh, clear to all of us. So the poetic devices, I have discussed the poetic devices which are very important. Uh, let me just give a quick review. Uh, the cardboard shows me personification. What to paddling was about enjambment. My mother's was the example of alliteration. Then stood still to smile was alliteration. Hair to camera was enjambment. My mother's was alliteration. Their transient, uh, their terribly transient feet, their terribly transient was an example of alliteration transient feet was transferred epithet then 2030 was an example of um, this one alliteration then later um, to betty then uh, later to snapshot betty to uh, dolly she had uh, then again we had uh, day to the beach holiday to the laughter ride to the labor ease of loss we had enjambment she had say was an example of what alliteration she had laughed at the snapshot was an example of alliteration Okay, labored ease was an example of oxymoron. And then again, as many years to the left and then circumstance to nothing to say at all was an example of enjambment. Silent silences was an example of different poetic devices, which were alliteration, paradox or say irony and a repetition. So I have discussed all the poetic devices that are used in this poem. And I think it was uh, an it was clear and uh, you got the point that I was saying. So, let us start the question and answer series which are given in our NCRT textbook. Okay. So, what does the word cardboard denote in the poem? Why has the word been used? Of course, the word cardboard denotes the photograph and has been used because the poet wanted to use a poetic device that was personification and also earlier what used to happen was that there uh, weren't the photo albums that we use today or basically of course we don't use photo albums also in this generation uh, in this time of course everybody has a phone everybody has uh, laptops computers and different tabs everything right so nobody has photo albums if you have also then it's not made up of cardboard but at very earlier times there used to be cardboard in which the photographs used to be pasted so that is the reason the word has been used here now what has the camera captured okay this is a very easy question what has the camera captured the camera has captured the three young girls who were standing on the um near the beach uh, they were paddling and they were uh, you know full of joy they were full of happiness uh, and they were very young they were holding each other's hand they were smiling through their hair okay now what has not changed over the years what has not changed the sea has not changed over the years which symbolizes what what does that suggest it suggests the eternity it suggests the immortality the poet mother laughed at the snapshot. What did this laugh indicate? Okay, what does this laugh indicate? So uh, in the very uh, paragraph in the second, uh, I mean the second stanza, she used to laugh when she used to see the snapshot. 
so her laugh indicates her joy of the uh, of remembering her past life when she was young and she was carefree she was cheerful she was enthusiastic she was a beautiful girl who was doing whatever that she used to want to okay so uh, she used to laugh and that laugh uh, indicates her joyful nature her laugh indicates that she is remembering her past and enjoying that what is the meaning of the line both ry with the labored ease of loss so both are disappointed in the very uh, earliest slides i have discussed this line both ry both are disappointed which means the mother and the poetess is a uh, worried because uh, the mother is uh, the sea holiday was a past and for the poetess her laughter so and they also lost something which was accessed with so much of great effort and so easily it was uh, so easily it was lost that it is like it's like unbearable what does this circumstance refer to this circumstance refers to the death of the poetess mother okay the three stanzas depict the three different phases what are they so these phases are the first stanza you could see in the first stanza that over here in the first stanza uh, her mother was young uh, uh, many a times i have discussed this uh, that her mother was very young she was cheerful she was uh, living her childhood she was sweet and uh, her was a beautiful face okay in the third in the second stanza she used to she was of middle age of 20 to 30 years and then uh, she used to laugh at the snapshot when she used to see that and then the third at uh, from the second stanza to the third we can make out that the mother is no more and uh, it talks about the phase of poetess life when her mother is no more in her life so the three stanzas depict something and we have discussed that and what are they also we have discussed okay so i hope that you liked my session and i hope that i uh, will be of some use i mean my presentation would be of some use and uh, would have clarified certain things i thought of just making it so that my uh, concepts would be cleared and i hope that your concepts would have got cleared to some extent so thank you so much and have a nice day ahead